Hey y'all, DBSR here again for another video on the BLF LT1. Now what we're going to do with this video is we're going to go through some of the basic operations of the Android software firmware on this and how it works and some of just the quick tips on, on how to program and change some of the modes. Uh, before I'll do that though, I'm going to remove this. Uh, Amish Bill on BLF made a little cheat sheet for um, actual uh, some of the, the modes itself. So what I did is print it and I poke between the cells. Let's pull this out. Push one cell down so I can grab this thing. And I, okay, what I did in here is I printed I think six sheets to one sheet of paper. So it's a miniature version. Uh, the only thing is that the, the print is very very fine. You may need to use reading glasses to read some of this but it's, it'll fit down here. Uh, so there's, there's a printout of the Android software and a printout of Amish Bill's cheat sheet which kind of helps especially for anybody until you get you know learn the actual firmware. So basically I just print that out and I roll the two of them together and I put them down the side and they fit between the cells perfectly. Great place to hide that. Uh, I believe SD Slider was the first one I noticed that did that. I think uh, he posted an image on, on the actual uh, in the topic. But anyhow, okay. So what we're going to go through first on how this works, uh, we're actually going to, instead of starting on the top, I'm going to start at the bottom. The auxiliary button LEDs and basically shows, okay, off. It's seven clicks, and the seven clicks can change several modes on this. Uh, just look for something here I can use for a point. Let's see, seven modes. So you got off, low, high, and blinking, which it's almost like the candle mode. So basically, right now I have it set up to the high mode with the lantern off. So basically, you go seven clicks and not hold, it will change this mode to the low, the blinking, or you can turn it off. So basically, you count them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It'll blink a couple times. There you go. Now it's in the kind of like the blinking mode. There it is. And if you want to change it again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This time it turns it off. And change it again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's on, but as you can see, it's on the low mode, so it's a very dim glow. Uh, this obviously would last for a couple of years. And it doesn't put much drain on the battery. But for a night light, I prefer to have it on the higher mode. And you could have the thing sitting on the, on the table. The power goes out when you look at it. You can actually see it and find the lantern. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There it is. So now it's on the high mode. So it's it's like a little candle glow sort of thing. Uh, the amp draw on this is very minimal. It'll, like I said, go for quite a long time between chargers not to worry about to run the cells out. So that's basically the auxiliary button control. Okay. Now, I believe, if, if correct, the lantern is shipped out with a default mode using the actual step, which is what's going on right now. So this is the step mode. So basically, to change that, some prefer to smooth mode, all you do is turn it on, then just do three clicks, but do not hold. One, two, three. It'll blink a little bit. So now when you hold it, there's your ramp mode. So in the ramp mode, it'll actually go dimmer. There's more of a candle, or a, a, like a... Uh, moonlight firefly mode it goes dimmer in the actual ramp mode than it does in the step mode so you click it three more times one two three release there's a step mode so it's floor or the lowest mode is slightly brighter it's a couple lumens so that's how to change from stepped to smooth in the actual uh, the ramps itself now we're going to change basically go from here as you can see in in, in the actual uh, this there's a bunch of actions here <clears throat> The solid line means one click. The broken line means one click, or actually one hold, and and so on. The other one corresponds two clicks, a click and a hold, three clicks, and another click and hold. So basically, if it's off, <clears throat> if you want, just say for instance, the lantern's on middle mode and you turn it off. Right now, I have it set to remember the last mode. So basically, if you want to start off in the lowest mode, basically you one hold equals the lowest mode, and there it is, the lowest mode. It'll be either in stepped or ramp. If you want it to go to the full brightness right away, basically you go click and hold. So click and hold. There it is. There's a full brightness. So it goes maximum either way. So that's that's like a quick access to the either the ceiling or the floor or the ramp in regards to that. So just follow which actual, uh, the green dotted line or the black dotted line, which will follow which, which, which controls here. And it's the same thing with the, um, the two clicks will bring you to, uh, there it is, so two clicks. And two clicks and hold will bring you to that. And if you hold it, it basically just drops the ramp down. So click and hold, and then it just starts dropping down. 
and it works the same way the other way around. So one hold starts low, and if you keep holding it, it'll ramp up. So it means you don't have to do click it to turn on and then go through your ramp. You could just push down and hold, it'll start ramping, and you leave it where you need. So that's basically a quick way of controlling the actual ramp. Okay, we're going to jump from here directly down to the tint ramp, which is very similar, but the actual is a little bit different. Now, some have questioned, they didn't realize that the, that the ramp can actually change the tint with the actual brightness ramp. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn it on. Right now it's on the middle mode, and I have it set around a 4K mark. So in order to change from warm to cool, basically what you're going to do is double click and hold while it's on. Now it's going warm. As you can see now, it's full. the first blink, it'll stop. So when you release the first blink, now you can ramp the full brightness to the lowest mode in the same tint, meaning it's going to stay warm. So and if you want to change it again, two clicks and a hold. One, two, hold. Now it's going to go to the cool side. There you go. So now it'll stay in that mode, in the cool white. So we're going to go back to warm. Two clicks and a hold. One, two, hold. There it is, there's warm. Okay, so now if you want to go to the auto warm feature, which is these little ones down here, and what it does from each hand, it'll either go from warm to cool or from cool to warm. So we're gonna go basically turn it on, double click and hold, and we're gonna wait for a second blink. The second blink means it goes into the auto mode. So click, click, hold. You're gonna see a first blink. There's one, the second one, okay. You notice how the second one changed the tint to almost neutral. So now when we go to full brightness, it goes warm. When it goes on the low, it goes cool. So if you want to reverse that, basically, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to double click and hold and bring it to the warm side. And you'll wait for two blinks. And as soon as you can see the second blink release. So now when you go to full brightness, it's full 5K at the cool side. Or the neutral side, I should say. And then if you bring it down, whoops, my bad. If you bring it up, if you bring it back down, it starts to go warm in the lower modes. So basically, it reversed the audio t auto tint, which is a great feature uh, because I find that the cooler bright modes are much better for more illumination and larger distance on the, on the cooler side. Uh, but for general use, I tend to just leave it in the manual tint. So what I do is I just double click and hold again and wait for the first click and you'll always release the button on the first click. If you wait till the second click, it'll go into auto mode every time. So one, two, hold. And it's going to blink once click so i like to bring, bring it down to now basically what we did then is we set it into the manual mode so we're just going to bring it back down to around a 4k mark one two hold right there okay so there's a nice balance neutral tint right there around the 38 4k okay so that's how the actual tint ramp works in in junction with the actual brightness ramp as well. Okay, so if you want to go into some of the other interestingly hidden modes there, uh, what we're gonna to go to, we're gonna step down to this one right here from off, uh, which is some of the hidden modes there, the lockout mode. So basically from off is four clicks and release. One, two, three, four. It'll blink several times. Now basically, it's basically only momentary on low. So it's, it's sort of your lockout mode right there. Electronic lockout, that is. Mechanical lockout, again, it's a quarter twist. So basically, to remove that, you four-click again. One, two, three, four. And there you go. The light came back on. Now we're back into normal operation mode. So if you want to go to the momentary on stroll mode, it's five clicks, which is the same. You just follow the same directions. From off, one, two, three, four, five, release. Now you hold it down, it's brighter. Now, the one thing about this mode I found is that I'm not sure how it releases supposed release because if you try five clicks again, it stays in there. One, two, three, four, five. It stays in there. So the only way I seem like you can deactivate that mode is mechanic lockout, turn it back on, and it goes back in normal mode. So maybe Toy Keeper can uh, comment on that because the other modes can release pretty easily. Uh, the Muggle mode is a six, it's six clicks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Basically what that does, it leaves it in a smooth ramping and limits the peak output. So People can't run the thing at full if you want to give, you know, bottle that loan it to somebody. Basically, it, it limits the, the peak output to roughly, I'm guessing, 70% or 65% range. Uh, I'm just trying to estimate roughly. Yeah, it's not near. I'm thinking, I'm thinking 65 to 70% maximum. And let me see if six clicks will actually reverse that. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it does. Okay, so what I did find is that. Six clicks can turn on muggle mode, six clicks turns off muggle mode. Four clicks turns on lockout, four clicks turns off lockout. 
but the momentary strobe mode, the five clicks, turns it on, but I can't get the five clicks turned it off. So I'm not sure if that's an error with the, the firmware or if it's just my my first purchase sample that's doing this. Uh, maybe somebody else can comment on that. So yeah, so basically that's how this works. So we're going to step down to some more interesting modes here that I really like. Uh, basically, it's the candle mode and the lightning storm, taxi mode, and things so on. So basically to get to this, if you look closely here, you'll see click, click, hold from off, right? So click, click, hold will bring you down to this other set of hidden modes so click click hold there it is okay this is basically i think it's the uh, bike flasher mode yeah so it started off in a bike flasher mode so you, you basically you see how the colored line is down there so basically these color lines are dotted solid exactly references to what the actions are up here so basically what the solid green means is two clicks so two clicks we'll change it into i think it's a party strobe and then two more clicks tactical strobe and then two more clicks lightning storm now the interesting thing i like lightning storm it's kind of cool as a little feature on a rainy cold night uh, but before you switch to that mode it seems to be more realistic if you switch it and have the thing in a full cold the cold tint which is the 5k adjust your tint from ramp down here to the full cold and it'll stay cold because you can actually change this tint but you have to do it before you actually set this mode so okay so right now we're into lightning storm so two more clicks we're bringing it into a candle mode now this can be change also brightness and dimmer slower so basically you follow this little uh, instruction right here dimmer slower which is two a, two a click and a hold so basically click hold there you go it dims it and this mode i prefer to use it in a full warm mode because that way it simulates an actual candle and also hidden amongst this mode is a 30 second or 30 minute timer on my stick so basically three clicks while it's in this mode will turn on a timer so after 30 minutes it shuts the lantern off so say if you're brushing your teeth, you want to go to bed, or you're in, in tent getting in your sleep, make things like that, you can set this mode into your candle mode and just do one, two, three, it'll stay on. 30 minutes later, it'll shut itself off and go from here. So it's an interesting to have that little timer mode. So one click will basically shut it off and one click again, completely back. So that goes back to the normal operation. So that's basically these hidden modes include candle mode. Uh, there's a few other ones here, over here called battery check and sunset and beacon and to go from that basically again you're starting off with the off mode because as you can see off there's a lot of controls from here so basically three clicks without holding will bring you right into the battery check so if you want to know how much power is left in your batteries basically while the lantern's off you go three clicks and release one two three then you count the number of blinks It'll basically tell you how much charges in your batteries so right now that's four one so my batteries actually at four two so my batteries at four well, almost four they're fully charged which you should because i charged this up earlier let's do it again one two three four one two three four okay it's one so it's 4.1 volts so it's around 4.14 4.15 and I click that turns off so that's basically the battery check now while you're in the battery check you can go to the other modes which include sunset and beacon mode so basically we're going to go back to the three clicks from off one two three now as you can see the change these modes you see there's a solid green line that solid green line again corresponds to two clicks so basically while you're in the battery check mode two clicks now you're in the sunset mode and i believe this i never really tested this i think it keeps dimming 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 then eventually shuts off over a period of time or if you want to go into beacon mode two more clicks there it is there's a the beacon mode which is your lightest mode now the beacon mode can be configured by using other action right there we're not going to get into that because something's a little bit complicated which which also falls into ramp configuration which is so on you can change the floor and the ceiling uh percentage and so on you'll save that for another time so basically what i want to do here now is just go to the basic uh, operations of the main modes and the thing so that's about what you've seen right there so again the cheat code that uh, amish bill made i rolled up in here i didn't print an actual one which is a great idea because it gives you an actual description of what actions to take and then printing out the Android, which is which is part of the manual it gives you an idea of what modes are where and how to access them and so on so right now from off one click brings it to my last memory which you can change that from a memory mode or things like that which is also in the configuration so basically and right now i've left this one at the step default and around 4k there you go so that's the basic operation of the Android software dbsr out